All right, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Mutant Experience. Uh, tonight, it's a very special podcast. We have uh, on as our special guest, none other than SoCal Third Strike Icon, Five Star Yi Wang. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad that you finally uh, made it to the Mutant Experience podcast. Uh, Yi, I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on. Um, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Ple- uh, pleasure to be on the uh, best Third Strike podcast. <laughs> the best and the only. The best yeah. and only Third Strike podcast. All right. So um, uh, before we get started, um, I actually just wanted to share a story with the uh, with the stream monsters because, you know, everybody loves stories. But Yi, actually, I don't know if you remember, but um, you're actually the person who introduced me to the FGC. You know that? Well, not not the FGC, but like family fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God, where? Do you where, remember where? where? Oh, that I, happened at Zod Zone. Was that? Zod yes, Zone? exactly. So. Oh my God. So for those yeah. of you uh, who don't know, well, I don't know any. None of you probably know because I don't think I've ever told anyone this. But um, I went to college uh, at, at UC Irvine, and uh, UC Irvine had an arcade called the Zot Zone. And for those of you who are like wondering why the name is the Zot Zone, um, basically, uh, <laughs> uh, UC Irvine's mascot was the Ant Eater. And um, apparently, ant eaters make the sound zot. I mean, I've never heard of I never heard an ant eater make a sound before, but whatever. So you see, Irvine's mascot was the ant eater, and so our arcade was called Zot Zone. Um, and at the Zot Zone, you know, as was customary in most arcades, you know, whether you found them in a college or a liquor store or you know in a neighborhood, you know, SoCal had every game, right? Like every arcade. This was like the the, the golden age of arcades. So Zod Zone had third strike, and uh, and I think one day you were there, right? E? Like, I don't yeah, know why my, you were at my, UC Irvine. <laughs> yeah, my my girlfriend at the time was going to school there, so okay. I, I definitely had to go check out the arcade <laughs> to see if there was third strike. And I think at the time you had just started playing the game, and you were using Ryu because Ryu, yeah, yeah, this Frankie is was your uh... two thousand and two, two thousand and two. So I was one year in into my third strike career, which is now. 16 years wow that's, that's a long time yeah. so so you were playing and and then i think uh i came on and then like after we finished playing you had turned to me and you said yo if you really want to play like the best third strike players in california you got to go to this place called family fun like, well, i didn't sound like a surfer or, well you, yeah, yeah. You, you said something of that nature like, yeah, you, said, okay. like <laughs> yeah. you said something like yeah the best the best people who play this game are at family fun you know, and so I was like, oh, okay. And so that was that was pretty much it. And then, like, I think one weekend, like, I, I told my friends uh, who I used to play Third Strike with in UCI, we called ourselves Team Control. I don't know if you Team remember Control, that. Team Control, yeah. yeah with Mr. Team Universe. Control, uh, the double Repukin. <laughs> double yeah, Repukin. Yeah, I remember those guys. And Closet Remy, the um, C&M yeah, player. Yeah, there was a Remy guy. There was a Remy guy. <laughs> Oh uh, man! Yeah, I, I can't remember the whole cast, but oh man! Yeah, I definitely remember. Yeah, and um, I was like, dude, let's let's all go to Family Fun one day, you know, because this guy said that they're all that this is where this is where it's happening. Um, so yeah, so it was it was uh it was Five Star that introduced me to to, to Family Fun, and that kind of oh, yeah. Wow, that was a that was a really long time ago. That was. I mean, a lot a lot of people have uh, fallen since then but there's <laughs> there's still some that stand there's some that are still standing do you know i i won my first tournament match at family fun and who did you play it wasn't me right no I no I, I i played okay. ed oh my god ed ma but you know he played dudley in that tournament i don't know why I'm but he sorry, was playing I, I, I can't remember this match i usually <laughs> remember every match i'm very good at remembering no, no. matches but yeah i don't remember that one yeah like the first time i ever went to family we entered a tournament and uh, I remember uh, the first person I played was this Dudley player. Um, and then I didn't even know it was Ed Ma. Just some guy was like, dude, you know who you beat? You beat some guy named Ed Ma. You beat Ed Ma. And I was like, okay. But, like, you know, I don't know anybody there, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was like, but, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Five Star was the one who uh, introduced me to Family Fun. And I guess uh, the, rest is, uh, the rest is history. Now we're uh, – now it's come full circle and – I guess <laughs> I'm on the uh, new next P podcast. Yeah. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Yi, uh, five star Yi Wang, 
Uh, he's obviously one of the more accomplished uh, SoCal third strike players uh, in American history. Uh, multiple time SBO qualifier has one won. Time. Has won. Uh, <laughs> did you qualify just twice? I no, you qualified just twice. once. Just once. Oh, all right. Which which what year was that? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> uh, but you've won uh, numerous tournaments, obviously. Um, I think you got second at Sunru Cup, which was really yeah. like. Do you think that was like the last tournament that really mattered? In the no, third strike, or... absolutely not. I, the last tournament that mattered, I got a uh, fourth place at TFC. Oh, TFC. Year. Okay, so you heard it here. So, so five star thinks that T last year's TFC mattered. So, actually, that's a good Dude, segue. Let's. Of course. Let's... How can how can it not matter? <laughs> So let's talk about last year's TFC, because I know a lot of people are uh, curious to hear what you think about uh, last year's event. So, like, what were your overall thoughts about the event? Like, because I know um, that you hadn't gone anywhere. Like, I'm trying to think of the last time you actually traveled somewhere for Third Strike. I mean, that was, whew. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was really good. I thought mm-hmm. it was a really good event. Um, I, I hadn't really been playing at all. Mm-hmm. Um kind of started playing again. I think TFC was what, in October, I believe, mm-hmm. October. Mm-hmm. So I started picking up the boys to uh, start picking it up and start playing again, maybe in like July or August. Um, so we played for about two, three months before we went there. But I thought the event was really good. I thought it was something that um, America should have been doing from the get-go. You know, I think everybody working together for one event a year. You know, as we Third Strike, we're... I'm 16 years into third strike. I don't really have the same time I, I can dedicate like I did when I was younger, but I think I can dedicate maybe a month, two or three, mm-hmm. two, three months, you know, every year to one event. So you like that idea of just having that like one signature third strike event every year to prepare for uh, yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I think once, I think everybody can spare no matter how busy we are in our lives. You mean like, you know, Sherwin's got, two kids and mm-hmm. you know he sneaks out in the middle of the night to come practice third strike so <laughs> I, I i think all of us no matter how busy we are with our lives love the game enough that we can spare maybe you know two three months to uh-huh. practice and play for it yeah so you've done like podcasts before i'm sure uh especially a lot of third strike players that are watching this podcast you know they've listened to you know the, the things that you've said on gutex podcast i know that you uh appeared on Renix twitch channel a lot when 3so dropped um but you know one of the things that they didn't really go into is just kind of like your mentality when you practice for something like tfc like well well first and foremost like what was your motivation for going to tfc like why did you go um because i mean you well, know your 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 legacy is pretty much you know set i mean you know like hanging hanging in the balance the legacy <laughs> is hanging in the balance um well i feel like you know being one of the leaders of the community at least on my side of the coast like uh-huh. if i go then people will follow me if okay. i don't go nobody nobody's gonna go so nobody on my side is gonna go if i don't go so hmm. you know last year we it was just me and um bean and sherwin mm-hmm. that i you know and then and Durlath was there um so it was kind of like you know i brought my guys those are kind of like those are guys that you know play with me that train with me that i teach you know personally mm-hmm. so it's like okay you guys let's make this trip let's let's go out there let's you know let's let's go play so mm-hmm. they were with it but this year since we all went last year and, you know, everybody had me, all three of us had nothing but good things to say. Everybody decided, you know, well, we have a lot of players going this year from, from SoCal, probably the most we've ever had SoCal travel, you know, SoCal players traveling. And historically, we all know how, historically, we yes. all know how hermetic SoCal players can be, right? <laughs> you know, in terms of not traveling, you know, we all know, like, in, you know, in terms of history, SoCal players traditionally don't really like to go anywhere in terms of uh, old school FGC. So, like, like, can you give us a rundown of who's going next year? You mean this year? Um, yeah, this year, yeah. Yeah, yeah so at first, it, at first it was just me and Sherwin, the, you know, the usual yeah. suspects. Um, geez, all of us. So Kaz and B-Tran were all, all about it. Those mm-hmm. two are probably... Um, to the more enthusiastic players that we have in our, you know, in our group. Mm-hmm. Um, so they said they were going to go, but of course, like I always say, I don't believe any of you guys until I see it. You know, until, until, I see yeah, you until, until I see you at LAX. <laughs> until, yeah, I, I see you at LAX with your bag, you know, and I don't really believe you, but yeah, those guys, they have their tickets. Mm-hmm. Um, 
all of a sudden, Cruz, Cruz is telling me he, he's going. Okay. Um, um, next thing you know, it Matt and Eric Chin, you know. Um, that surprised tagging, me when you yeah, told that, me that. I'm, I'm surprised by that too, trust me. They're tagging along, telling me, asking me how much I pay for tickets. Um, Red Venom is going, very improved player, so you guys need to watch out for him this year. Oro main, um, right? Oro main? Huh? No, Oro main? Ken. Ken? Okay. Ken I thought player. he was Oro. Uh, yeah, he'll be playing. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. But <clears throat> then both the Lario brothers, they, uh, <laughs> they do the boiler room. FM, um, FM, FM will be going. Um, nice guy, Mark. I think, yeah, it will probably be his first time on a plane, but he'll be going. <laughs> um, I, I, I think I'm missing some guys, but yeah, we got a lot of people. We got a lot of players going. Wow. It's, it's, I've ever, I've seen, it's the most we've ever seen. That 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 sounds really awesome. SoCal and Moss is is making it to TFC. That sounds great. So so back to my original question. Um, when we were talking about last year's TFC, and so you know you felt like you had an obligation to go. Um, how, how what you know what was your sort of mindset in terms of preparing for TFC or training for it? Like, like what, what, what were like specific what, things that you were just yeah. kind of like working on because you know we had played the game for like 15 yeah. years right so it's like what do you practice what do you yeah last, last year to be honest i don't think i took it very seriously um mm. I, had, I had i had some other i had a lot of other things going on mm -hmm. so i i didn't put my best foot forward for that year but this year my my practice sessions i can i can explain those like um definitely this year like my my mindset is every week i have something in my mind something that i've drawn up that I want to go and try when I go play every mm -hmm. Friday. I play every Friday at dance. Um, so every Friday I come in with something new and I want to try it out. If it works, then I add that to the arsenal of stuff that I have. If it doesn't work, scrap it. You know, I have mm -hmm. a couple of things that I want to try out every week. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, you know, that's what I tell the players there and come in every week with the mindset of something new that you want to try out. You know, mm. now is the you know now is the time to practice. You know, it's not about it's not about winning casual matches right now. You save your winning for for tournament matches. Do, you so know, the, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Yi, but like I, I think that you know we're I know that you wanted to talk about like different mentalities, you know, yeah. between American and Japanese players. But one thing that like that really struck a chord with me was how Americans treat casuals. You know, because like some like like what you said really makes sense, right? Like when are you gonna like like you really shouldn't care. I mean, you should care about winning, I guess. But like during casuals, I mean, your priority yeah, should be different. Yeah. You know, these guys. I mean, the guys I play with, they're scratching, and I, I describe it to uh, B Tran like scratching and clawing, using the same tricks. You know, using the same moves that they've been using for ten years to try to you know scratch and claw out a win. You know, and when it comes tournament time, you know things change. You know, players play a lot more tight. You're you're not gonna land as many hits, you know, and uh -huh. that just doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work anymore. And they don't have anything new in their, you know, in their backpack, in their, in their pocket, in their mm -hmm. back pockets pull out. So that's because they didn't train, they didn't train themselves. They, they failed to prepare themselves when they had a chance to prepare. They were too busy trying to, trying to win games, you know, mm -hmm. games that don't really matter. And I, I think that makes a big difference in their performance in tournaments because, you know, people, when they, when they play in a tournament, it's a lot different. I play a lot different in a tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, you lock down. You know, you you play a lot more. You play a lot more safe. You you don't you don't you wouldn't get hit by a lot of the moves that you would get hit by in casuals. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's you know, but that's like easy for like you and me to say, right? Because we've been playing the game for like fifteen years, and so like a win here or there in casuals doesn't really mean a whole lot to us. But like just coming from the perspective of like someone who's just started, you know, like winning really matters to them, whether it's casuals or, or, or tournament. I mean, what do you say to that player? Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's tough, but look, I mean, it's, it's really tough. I, I understand that for where they're coming from, but then mm -hmm. there are players that I've been playing for 10 years that are still doing the same thing. <laughs> you know, I'm for sure. You know what I mean? And yeah, I'm, gonna, I do. Yeah, I'm not going to say any names, but dude, there are players that, that are doing the same exact thing that I saw, saw them doing at FFA 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, so not, you know, yeah, there are players that are new that, winning is important to them because they want something they want to take a step to them you know the only step is winning a game but there uh, are players that have not ever tried to ever improve their play play at all mm -hmm. 
And so, speaking of which, you know, last year at TFC, uh, you got to meet uh, and you got to witness a lot of players that um, that you've never really seen play before. Um, you know, were there any p- players in particular that you know you kind of that that sort of surprised you or impressed you, or you're like, you know, hey, this these these players have some potential, or wow, these players could be really could be really strong in a few years. Or I I I think um, I was very surprised that there was a group of players from from Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I was really surprised by them. They had some, they had a pretty good young player. Um, uh, I think you're talking about Sheen from Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he is pretty good. Um, he was very calm. He's a very calm young player. I like that. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't, never panicked. Um, yeah, there was, uh, there was a lot of players I I I didn't expect to see. So mm-hmm. um, I thought, of course, you know, because I've been playing the game for so long their fundamentals are still a little behind. Maybe they're new to the game. You know, it's, I don't know how long they've all been playing. I'm guessing, I'm guessing less than 10 years, but, you know, definitely fundamentals. Their technology, I I call it technology. The technology is very up to date. You know, they know how to do all the combos. They know all the new tech and stuff, but their fundamentals are lacking. And um, I think that's, that's something that's harder to improve on. So I, I hope to see um, I hope to see them in next month and see how how they've come along. Yeah, because the you know the the Austin players I, I think you're probably talking about the players that came from Arcade UFO. Um, yeah, you know they're 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 definitely I guess if we had to put a number on them they're like third generation Austin players. Third third generation. You know like for like first generation is like players like Haas and Slim X. And then second generation is like, Max. and then second generation is like Moprim and Mo Fubar Prim Duck. Is second generation, and yeah, eight, man, there was a generation these guys, then these before. These guys are like eighth generation. Yeah, and and so these guys are, yeah, maybe they're 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 eighth generation. Yeah, but, but yeah, so they're like, so so you know when these guys started playing, you know, like those those players, like the players that you and I played, you know, they were they were long done with the game already, you know. Right, How much right, right. in terms of lack of fundamentals, you. You know, how much of that is uh, attributed to kind of like the lack of like tournaments or like events and stuff? Like, because I was thinking like, you know, a lot of people like to play Third Strike casually. You know, they'll like meet up with their friends and they'll go, like, okay, we'll play Third Strike for like a few hours here and there. But yeah. like very few scenes now, they're like, okay, we're going to have like an actual tournament. Like a, like in Japan, right? For example, Game Newton Oyama, every Wednesday they do the single limb tournament you know like how much like how much do you think you know being in a tournament environment helps with your fundamentals oh it's it's a it's a big difference i was thinking about it the other day um the level of competition i i I don't mean like skill level competition but Mm -hmm. i mean like the level of how much you want to beat somebody these days is really low um Mm -hmm. i think because you're surrounded by players that are always playing casuals you know you lose a casual game it's okay to laugh it off but back in the FFA days, man, you lose you lose a tournament day. I, I would go. I would sulk for like hours. I would sulk sulk <laughs> for hours. You know, you don't have you don't see that anymore because there's mm-hmm. no tournaments. You know, you, you, I need these guys. I need these young players that I play with. I need them to feel what losing feels like, and they don't know what losing feels like because they don't have the opportunity to lose. You know, something that actually counts for something. Mm-hmm. You know everything's kind of just you know clowning around trying out new characters trying out new stuff but the feeling of losing in a casual game is not the same as feeling of losing in in a competition and definitely it takes away from you know it definitely takes away from fundamentals basics everything it takes away from everything so so colin aka shodakon123 who was my guest last week um he just wrote in the chat that perhaps a, a part of it is the fact that you don't have to you know, pay for your losses literally in terms of putting money on the on the cab. I mean, how much of that do you? Because, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I I've heard that argument before, but I'm not really. I mean, I, I, I don't th- know. I, I, think, I guess it. Works, I think if but... um, losing, like, you know, and when we used to play, it was like quarters. You yeah. know, if, if if losing quarters and dollars is your motivation, you know, is, your... Is, is your motivation not to lose, then you need to find something. You know. <laughs> else better to do with your time because uh-huh. that this obviously you don't have the passion for this game if mm. it's all about you know not losing your money you know mm. you can do something else to not lose your money um for me it, that was never a motivation not at all mm-hmm. okay 
so yeah, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, maybe if scenes really want to get better, just, you know, e even if it's just like, I don't know, like I remember last last year at TFC, the New York crew, we were just doing like random like single elimination tournaments. We would do like a string of like three or four of them in one night, you know, just to have what it feels like to kind of, because cause, yeah, you're right, you know, the feeling is different when you're like, oh, okay. Like if I don't win this, I can't move on. You know, it's even if it's just for practice or whatever. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a that's a really yeah. good point. There's a different feeling of, of playing in a tournament. I can't, you know, like how many times have you gotten off the cabinet and your hands are, you know, your hands are wobbly, uh -huh. right? That you you can't do you can't duplicate that simulation in in casual casual matches. Mm -hmm. How much of that is like? Like how much of that is like why you 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 continue to go to these events like that that adrenaline that rush like do you well, like that do you yeah. like that feeling I, I like when I you know I like when I get off the cabinet my hands are wobbly and I won and you won like, right <laughs> yeah to get off the cabinet to lose and your hands be wobbly no I don't I don't miss that feeling not not, not at all um, yeah it's 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 not too much of a reason. But there, I mean, it's not, yeah, you're right. There is some, definitely some adrenaline of, you know, making a huge comeback, you know, in a big match in a tournament, you know, that I definitely missed that feeling mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And that's kind of something you and I were talking about before the stream ended. Like we were going to, we were, I was mentioning co-op cup, right? And like, you know, like everyone outside of Japan sees co-op cup is just like, mega event right like the event where everyone proves themselves and it's like how well you do at co-op club is the mark of how great of a player you are but like i was telling you before the podcast is when i was in co-op club like i was i got the feeling that the japanese didn't really see co-op cup that way like for them that's kind of, i think that was the word i was looking for like for for them co-op cup is that opportunity for them to get that adrenaline rush you know what i mean like that for them that's like like if you want to if you want to determine how good of a player you are, you I guess you do, I guess you do sets right. You do first to fives, first to tens. That's where you learn. That's where you can sort of gauge yourself. But something like co op cup, I feel like the Japanese they look forward to that event because of that rush, you know. Because you see how animated they are. You see how excited they are when they when they when they play that when they play in that tournament. And I feel like co op cup, especially because it's a team tournament, you know, win or go home, one game. Like, I feel like the Japanese, that's why they, like, look forward to it. I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's, it's... You know, absolutely. A absolutely. Um, like, for me, that I think you're right. Like, for me, TFC is that feeling, you know, um, mm. the adrenaline of doing something sick on stage. Uh -huh. um, you know, I um, like, for, for us Americans, because we're not at Co-op Cup every single year, for us, that's like our Super Bowl, you know, mm -hmm. like. We go there. We're like, okay, this is. We're gonna give it our best shot. You know, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna play our absolute finest play and try to win it. I mean, for the Japanese, it's like their stage to show what kind of player they are. Versus, you know, d winning doesn't really define them. Whereas mm -hmm. for us, winning defines who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think, but for me, for TFC, yeah, I would like to win, but I would like to show something sick more than I want to win. I think at TFC, mm -hmm. yeah. So aside from the Texas players, I mean, was there anyone else that sort of caught your eye or surprised you at how well they they, they performed? I mean, you know, or was it pretty oh, I, much? I, I, I thought I thought my players did really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, were there any players that you were sort of disappointed in last year at TFC that you're like, wow, I can't believe that they didn't do as well as I thought they would? Um. Um, hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe Kang. Yeah. <laughs> Kang. Okay. I well, he, uh, I don't think he made it on stage. Well, in all defense, you know, Kang shared his room with like eight other people, and he was running the stream, and he was running the tournament. So. I know what that's yeah, like. We'll, we'll give him a pass. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know that's one. That's why Kang should just hire someone to stream this year's TFC. You know, yeah. he should just like get somebody to stream it so he can concentrate and just play. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, who know. else? Oh, maybe um, Lance was a little disappointing. 
<laughs> Lance was disappointing. Uh, yeah, he was <laughs> really disappointing. Well, I mean, like, it, you know, you know how, like, in, in, like, in, like, sports, they, they keep, like, your percentages, like, free throw percentage, field but, goal percentage, three-point percentage. Lance is of... Uh, but he Lance didn't lose is, to Scrubs. Uh, like, he listen, lost Lance, to... Lance's low four confirm rate was probably... Uh, okay. All time, all time low. Okay, I, I for, think for a, for a whole for a whole weekend of third strikes, all time low. I think I think if I was going to TFC, I think I think I would challenge Lance to a hit confirm contest. I think I think I would score higher. Yeah, than I don't I don't I don't think anybody <laughs> would want to watch that, but you no. Know, so but but the thing is, Lance. It, hopefully, you guys can find a corner to <laughs> do that. To do it. But Lance didn't lose to like Scrubs. He lost to Gavin, and he lost to Frankie. I mean, I guess it's the way he lost. Yeah, he, to them. he had he had a chance to to win those matches, mm-hmm. but he um he didn't he didn't. So. Uh, well, what did you yeah. think about my boy Shota Khan though? Because I've gone on record, Shota Khan's performance yeah. was to me like that was my favorite part of TFC. He, he stepped up um, watching liked, Colin play. He stepped up. I liked his emotion. I liked mm-hmm. his emotion and how how animated he was when he. I forgot who he beat somebody, but he was really animated when he won. I like that kind of emotion. Yeah, that was very, very fresh to see. Because yeah. he beat he beat Sherwin, right? Yeah, Which he beat was... Sherwin, but there was somebody that he beat. I think it was either in teams or something, uh-huh. and he he like really showed a lot of emotion. Yeah. And I like that kind of fire. Yeah, yeah. So so and and just I guess before we uh, take some questions. Hopefully, uh, people are on the uh, have have, have uh, filed into the Discord. Uh, remember, guys. Um, you can uh, let me go ahead and uh, just uh, link you guys. I think I put the link in, but if you guys want to call in and uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, you know, and you want to ask five stars some questions live, um, you can uh, go to this Discord link uh, and uh, you can ask them live. Uh, but before we do that, I mean, just you know, before we go on break, I know you kind of talked about it before. You like you weren't really. You didn't really take it too seriously, but like, I mean, how do you think you did overall in NTFC? Like, I, 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 well, my mindset has always been. I, I feel like in my life, I've always tried to be a perfectionist in everything I do. Huh. I thought about, you know, I, I assessed myself a while ago, not just in third strike, but in life, and I felt like, you know, using a third strike example, I, you know, for all the tournaments I've won, I've never been satisfied with my play in any of them. I've never, I've always like looked back and you know, said, oh, I could have done that a little bit better. You know, uh-huh. oh, I, that round should have ended a little earlier. I missed this. I missed that. Uh-huh. So when I, when I look back and I look, think of TFC, I think, I mean, of course, everybody can say, wow, I could have done this a little better, a little, uh, that a little better. But I felt like, you know, um, last year I lost to, you know, two, two really, really good players that, are, yeah. that I have, you know, I have, I definitely didn't want to play against, but you, you know, you had to if you go that deep in the tournament. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you know, I got beat bad. I'm like one round away from beating the both of them. Yeah. So I felt like if I, and, and if I did a little bit more in preparation, not last year, but this year, I feel like you know, the preparation that I put in this year, I think like I, I can get over that hump of last year, not not being able to overcome that those two close losses. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. so uh, oh, cool. We have someone on the Discord. So uh, we have someone that you may uh, that you may recognize. Ye, okay. we have uh, AC Slayer okay. on the I stream, AKA him. Art. AC, can you hear yes. us? Yo, what up? Hey, uh, hey. can you uh, can you turn Long down your? Uh... See, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna Sorry, turn it down right now. Yeah, say yeah. Oh, okay, now he left, but it, it was working. <laughs> it was working though. It was working. Hold on, he'll be back. He'll be back. This sounds so pro, like the Stephen A. Smith show, you know, when he gets yeah, callers in. Great. This is great. I love it. <laughs> All right. Get back in here, AC Slayer. Uh, remember, guys, just uh, click on the link if you want to ask questions live uh, on the stream. Uh, once again, guys, you're uh, you're watching the Mutant Experience uh, podcast with Yi Wang. No, man. Uh, come on the stream. Ask your question live. Um, just, just, just come back on. Just, just use headphones or something, you know. That, that, that probably will work. Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and wait for him. <laughs> um, Come on, AC. Dude, Art used to play. Remember UCLA? What was the name of that of arcade? Course, I, of course. What was uh, the name of the arcade? Uh, oh, Jesus. What was the name? Oh. oh, 
my god, what was the name? Escape or something or like No, I don't know. it's close. It's something. Like something. I was thinking something X2. X something or X uh, Was it coins? No, it, it used what? to be coins. It, it was coins, but before coins it was something else. Yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah. God, what was What was the name of that? There was a lot of um, X Arcade or no, X Arcade, something like that. There's a lot of right. players there that still play today. All right. So you gotta unmute yourself, AC Slayer. Make sure you uh, unmute yourself. Um. Yeah. Dude, where'd he go? Dude, Art, you're 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 messing you're messing stuff up. Just just unmute yourself. <laughs> no, just unmute yourself, and then I I'm the one. I'm the one who's gonna put you in the chat. <laughs> yeah because 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 you know i have to do that because because you know then people could just you know come in live and whatever but um but yeah this is gonna work uh, i know it just gotta get a x arcade no yeah it's god, no it's not name? x arcade it's, it's not something it's like not. that god i'm gonna look it up yeah yeah definitely definitely Dude. So, um, but while AC Slayer gets uh gets his act together here, um, like, how come they don't stream at dawns? Um, like uh, I've I've seen Jr. take like, yeah, those that's uh, that's but... our streaming, that's our streaming. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't. Okay, so first of all, like, I don't think I've seen a SoCal arcade have direct feed in quite a long time. Uh huh. Um, so is that if you're talking about streaming directly or just streaming with yeah direct feed yeah it's dude it, that place is it's packed it's it's a monkey house in there um so it's tough I think it's tough yeah and so uh you know I've never been to Dawn's but like so they have two cabs dedicated to Third Strike that yeah, works they have two they're trying to get a third okay. All right, so we got AC Slayer. So AC, can you hear us? Yo, what up? Oh, uh, great. So you're on, you're you're on the Mutant Experience live with uh with Five Star. Yeah, Yee, how are you been, dude? Good. How are you? Long time no see, buddy. Yeah, dude, dude. Um, I missed you a lot, dude. Thank you so much for helping me back, back when I was. I don't know how I helped you, but I'm I'm you glad did, I helped you. You were teaching me so much <laughs> tech. Like, uh, you were the first person who like uh did that red parry the first hit of Ken's uh, EX Fireball after low board. And yeah, you I, would I, try to, I try to tell people that, but people don't believe me. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you, you kept punishing. I'm me glad with, you could um, vouch for me. I'm glad yeah. you're, you're on a national broadcast vouching for me, AC. Yeah, you, you did. You did like an option red parry into a medium punch DPSA three, and yeah, you kept doing that. To me. I was like, I, I like went over to the other side of Family Fun. I, I tapped on the show. I'm like, hey, how are you doing that? Like, as I, you did to me like two or three times in the same round. I was like, what the fuck? It's like how I um, it's how it's I super talked present. about earlier. Um, I was practicing it against. I was practicing it, you know, pur pur purposely putting myself in a situation where you would throw that EX fireball so I can parry and yeah, parry yeah. and try. Yeah. Well, the question yeah. is, why don't you why don't you do strong shore? Why didn't you do strong shore you to begin with? It is. It was strong shore. You was it? Because I thought it was yeah. fierce shore you that you started doing it with. Or... Oh no no I did I did it with, I started with strong and then and then it became oh, okay. fierce and then it just became jab and without the super. <laughs> as as my skills have deteriorated over <laughs> over aging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So yeah, I do have uh one question uh regarding Kentech uh for five star. Can I ask it? Yeah, man, you can ask as many questions as you want, dude. As long okay. as uh, five stars willing <laughs> right, to answer so them. I'm hoping you would know because you know he's like a Ken expert. So um I watch a lot of uh Japanese Ken footage and I see a lot of them doing uh crouching medium kick into fireball yeah. and then into SA3. And I'm wondering, like, whenever I see that, like, are, is that some sort of option select trick where um, it'll, it's it's going to confirm every single time it hits and not yeah. on block? It or has to that... be, it, yeah, it has to be a close, it has to be, like, a really close medium kick. I, I use it, I use standing fierce. I use standing fierce, and then I throw the fire. <laughs> if, if it hits, you can confirm into super. Mm -hmm. If you watch some of uh, B-Trans, B-Trans got a YouTube channel, and he takes videos from Don's. I, I do it a couple times with fierce. Um, I don't, I don't use the low forward as much as I use the fierce. Um, but yeah, you can pretty much throw the fireball out, confirm it, and then super it off that. 
So you just um, get more time? Is, is it... You get a lot of time. You get a lot of time. You can sit there and it's, it's 100%. You, anybody can confirm that one. Um, another, th another thing is like, if you can't figure out something when you're seeing from a Japanese player, like try to rewind it back five seconds and see how the whole thing unfo unfolded. Usually, usually it comes off the same situation. You know, my explanation for that is think of a move that you do, that you like to do AC Slayer, uh, with Ken. Um, usually it's, it's set up in the same situation. So if you want to really identify why a Japanese player does something, Go look at the video, rewind it five seconds, and then find another situation where he does it. Usually it'll be in the same situation. And you'll kind of figure out, like, oh, this is the time where he uses this move. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, definitely. So look for a setup, like... Yeah, you know, it's, it's like usually that. the same situation. A setup somewhere on the screen. Um, maybe it's the same character. It, same situation. It's usually a very similar situation that they'll be using that, that move. Mm -hmm. Is the low forward yeah, fireball? Um, I, is is it a sorry sorry uh, art? But I just wanted to ask you real quick. Um, is the low forward fireball? I mean, is that is that a form of DED as well? No, it's it's not a, it's not a DED at all. It's just um, it's just a really late cancel that you can do if it's if okay. it's close. It's kind of yeah, you dash up like right in front of him. Mm -hmm. It's okay. usually not not like a far. It's usually not like a you know max range low forward. It's usually a pretty close. close yeah. Level. Yeah. yeah, same thing with the fierce punch. It's even easier with the fierce punch. So you can do like you know like a let's say air reset, like mm -hmm. air parry, air parry reset, um, roundhouse. You know, roundhouse kick him on the floor, dash up fierce, and then you know do the fireball and the super. It, it, you can pretty much see it and and confirm all of it. It's something that I use now. Yeah, well. First of all, I want to thank you because I did ask a lot of people. <laughs> I asked Kang, I asked uh, all sorts of different people that might know, and they all didn't have an answer for me. So you're definitely the first one who was able to elucidate that tech. So um, I knew it wasn't a DED because I kept seeing Deshi Ken do it even when he had uh, more than two stocks of SA3 uh, loaded. So it wasn't a DED for sure. But um, yeah, like I didn't even know you could do it with Fierce Punch. So maybe I'll give that a shot. Yeah, it, I haven't really researched the low forward one, low forward fireball one yet, but maybe I'll look into that today, later tomorrow or something. Mm -hmm. I'll try it out. I, I'll, it's definitely something I'll try out this week. Well, there is some risk involved in that, though, right? Like, if you if the opponent blocks sure. the fireball, that's like, as, as, as Colin pointed out on the stream, it's negative 11, which is... um. And so if your opponent has a, a super that's fast enough on startup, you should be able to punish the fireball. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. Like, that's why I'm not sure, like, why yeah. they use it. You'd have to, like, go and really look yeah. at the situations of why they use it. It must be... It these might players be an option are, select. I, I don't, it's not an option select. I just think that these players are really, really smart players and wouldn't purposely use a move that they know would endang endanger them. So mm -hmm. I need to go and look it up and get back with an answer. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks, AC Slayer, for your question. I yeah. uh, really appreciate it, man. And uh, for those of you who are on the stream, uh, remember AC Slayer hosts a uh, Fightcade Sunday tournament series with Kazzy and h -Rove called No Respect. And so uh, definitely check that out, twitch.tv slash AC Slayer 3S. So uh, definitely uh, check that out. All right, so uh, Yi, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a break. Uh, but when we come back, uh, we're going to turn our attention to... Uh, this year's TFC, and uh, we'll get your thoughts on on, on this coming event. So, right. for those of you who are watching, stay tuned, and we'll be back with more immune experience.
All right, guys, we're back with more uh, mutant experience. Uh, tonight's guest, five star Yi Wang from SoCal, and so um, let's uh, let's turn our uh, discussion to uh, this year's TFC uh, Yi. So um, first and foremost, obviously, the thing that's like garnering all the attention is obviously the the, the Japanese players, right? And so from from our last count, there are going to be five. Japanese third strike players um, making their way to TFC. Uh, and I think the list is KO, Kokujin, RX, Issei, um, and Yakun. I think that's, that's it, right? Did I name them all? Yeah, you got them. Okay. So, I mean, obviously that's, that's the super big deal, and that's the one thing that really separates this year's TFC from last year's. And so, you know, what was your initial reaction when you heard that all the Japanese, all of those Japanese players were coming? Um, I was like, oh shit, I need to go practice right now. <laughs> so which, uh, well, which, which Japanese player are you, uh, are you sort of looking forward to playing the most? When you're None there? of them. None of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm very looking forward to playing RX. Mm. Uh, I've never played against him. Mm. And. Um, I, my, one, of, one of my best matches is Urian, so I want to see how I do against him. Mm, he, okay. And he's also like the, um, the people's champion. You know what I mean? Like, he's, uh, he's the most loved player in probably, probably the most popular player in, in the world, uh -huh. right? You would say? I, I tried to watch a lot of his matches at a uh, co op cup, and like, just from like a fan perspective, to be completely honest, all of the matches that I saw him play at Co-op Cup were actually pretty. I mean, they Ugly. were pretty like boring. You know, they were just yeah. like 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 they were godlike because like he's really solid and you know, and and almost all of the matches that I watched, none of the matches had you know more than thirty seconds left on the on the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Japanese will drain the clock. So you know, in terms of, I mean, that's another thing too, right? Like. Like in terms of videos, like that, they really skew your like perception of a player, right? Like, Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember the joke back in the day where like Watson never had videos of him winning. On, on, you know, like, do you remember that joke where like basically, like Watson would always complain that, that, yeah, that, that like no one would ever yeah. post videos every of him time, winning. Yeah, every time he, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Um, so Watson would come to family and he'd lose to everybody, and I mean he'd win a lot too. He beat a lot of good players. Yeah. A really good player. But none of those videos, he, he, because let's like I would beat Watson, so they would put me up because I'm a family yeah. friend. Or Frank or Pyro would beat Watson, they put him up. So Watson would always complain the only videos of him <laughs> that ever go up is of, of, is of him, him losing. Uh -huh. But then when I when super when people started having our, uh, tournaments at Super Arcade, yeah. every single time I won, it never ever made it to the internet I, that, I promise you i promise you never made it into the internet that, that was watson's revenge i guess yeah it was definitely his revenge definitely dude. and the one time i lost to like hung b he 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 put it up <laughs> yeah of course it his boy yeah <laughs> so yeah um but yeah like i feel like videos like skew like a lot of that reputation that rx got is because of all the videos that yeah all the videos yeah but like yes. when i watched him in tournament i mean he's just it's it's he's just really solid like he's just you know he doesn't really try anything like super fancy he's just really good with his normals um really good with you know playing we'll, footsies we'll and stuff that. we'll see about that next month i bet you he's gonna put a lot of people in the um in the popcorn machine yeah like like rkf did when he uh when he went to yeah, fight club yeah, three yeah. a little but bit but i've always wanted to take down the people's champ because he's a fan favorite and i want to destroy the fan favorite yeah so which player do you absolutely not want to have to play in singles? Japanese player. Oh, dude, KO. I've never been KO once in my life. <laughs> not once. Is yeah. it just him or the Yang matchup? Or what's... Oh, yeah, KO can pick any character and I'll never beat him. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the Yang matchup is really tough for me because there's no good Yang players um, here and here. I would love to like practice with Nika Ko and really learn how to play the matchup, mm -hmm. but yeah, Ko Yang, Ko Yoon, Ko, Ko anything, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, n not to like you know ask you to divulge any secrets or anything or whatever, but like I mean, you're a smart player, Yi. I mean, like, what is it about the Yang matchup that's like that you have like the most trouble with, like in terms of like I'm sure like when you watch your matches back, you're like okay, yeah, but like what what yeah, is it that you what you recognize that you're not doing, you know, while you're in the moment? I feel like that character makes me guess and it makes me panic. Um, uh -huh. They they play to their speed uh -huh. because I'm not familiar with. I don't know how to end. I don't know how to anticipate their moves yet. Like for example, I play. I've been playing against Tenren a lot mm -hmm. these days, and the Buki player, yeah, when I, Ibuki player, yeah, very really good player. Mm -hmm. I struggled a lot against Tenren because he's just out there doing whatever he wants. You know, you don't see these moves a lot. You know, you don't see. You know, there's first of all, there's not a lot of Ibuki players. Let alone, not there's not many good Ibuki players. Mm -hmm. So her moves are kind of foreign to you. You don't know how to react to them. But most importantly, in Third Strike. You don't know how to anticipate them. So I didn't know how to anticipate his moves. You know, anticipation is key to punish. You mm -hmm. know, if you can't anticipate a move, it's really hard to do the right punish. Mm, okay. So I really, really struggled. But now that I've been playing, you know, really sat down and made an effort to learn how to fight against her moves, I, I felt like I've really gotten, I've been able to slow down the pace of the match a lot against Tenren. I mean, not mm -hmm. not like s slow down where it's like, you know, you're, you're just, you're doing nothing, but... I'm able to slow things down in my head. I can process, you know, more than one one guess in my mind. I can process process and look for two to three guesses. So Yang for me is like I'm still not able to see more than one move hmm. at a time. You know that when you're really good against a character, you're able to see all of their moves and anticipate all their moves and be able to stop all of them or at least two or three options of it. Against Yang, I'm not able to stop more than one or two at a time. So that's okay. that's my struggle, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, don't see it. Now. I mean, going back to Ibuki, I mean, yeah, you're right. You know, just the unfamiliarity with the character. You know, one thing that that, that I noticed is that Ibuki's kind of deceptive in terms of what moves are safe and what moves aren't. That's really hard. It was really hard to figure out, and it's definitely something you got to see over and over and yeah. over until you get it right. Yeah. Yeah, I I kind of feel like Ibuki's like. An SF four, SF five character in Third Strike, you know, like, You're right, where right. you kind of have the, to know the numbers a little bit. The moves are all weird, you know. It it hits weird. It you know, parries weird. Yeah, I totally understand. So you know, aside from the Japanese going, I mean, what what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? Because um, the last time that I looked at the schedule in terms of this year's TFC, there's a lot. There's a lot on the schedule, right? Um, there's uh generals, I guess. Um exhibitions can, can you shed light because 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 that's something that we haven't really heard too much i mean i'm obviously not i don't in know the, if uh... i'm supposed to talk about it so, okay yeah. okay yeah. Uh, i'm just I wondering if I you think, can if you can know. say anything i don't think i can oh okay yeah. okay because i don't know anything about you know i i just know that there's supposed to be exhibitions going on between top players but i don't know any of there are some there are some exhibitions going on okay, okay. yeah maybe it's that uh hit confirm contest between you and lance yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, well, let's approach the question another way. If you were, uh, if you were the Don King of TFC, what what are some of the matches that what what would be your ideal card for for TFC oh, in terms of ideal card? Like, what would oh, you put man. as a you're, you're you're Vince McMahon, you're Don King right now. You're you're gonna create the the card right now. What what are some matches that you would? I mean. <sighs> I would say me versus RX, but I want to beat them in the tournament, not uh, in an exhibition. I okay. want to, like, you know, send them home. Pack, <laughs> send them packing. Pack it Japan. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, I would like to see just, I think I would like to see, in terms of skill level, I think Kale's in another tier. I don't think any American player matches up with him. Mm. So anytime you play an exhibition with him, it's not really, I don't think it's going to be very competitive. Mm. Um, but I would love to see RX versus every player, like every, like every, you know, Titan, you know. Okay. Yeah, I would love to see RX against all of the uh, Titan players. I'd love to see RX versus Yuki. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, y Yuki's best character, maybe Yoon. Yeah, Yuki Yoon versus RX. That would probably be my, because it's two like super sick players. You know, that that probably be my main event. Okay. Um, I think maybe my second match would be Nika Kao versus Kokujin because oh, uh, wow. I, I just, 
I've, yeah, because I've seen Nika Ko be, beat Dudley players really. He's really strong in that match, right? You think? Or no? It, it's hard because we don't really have very strong Dudleys in New York. So, um, but uh, I mean, Nika's okay. just strong in general. So, I mean, yeah, I, I did see him I, play uh, uh, quite a few Dudleys in Japan, and he didn't really have much of a problem in the matchup. Yeah, so so I want to I want to see that either. He, yeah, Nika Ko versus um. Definitely Nika Ko versus Kokujin because I think both players are very crazy. You know, like they're, um, you know what I mean? They're they're crazy players. They're well, they're they're, they're 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 both uh, they're both wheel of fortune. They're both wheel of fortune yeah, spinners, yeah, right? Spin the, they'll spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Um, very offensive minded players. Uh-huh. Um, I expect rounds on an average of thirteen seconds or less. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You know, just I just want to see like a like a like a perfect third strike chain chain of events per round, if you know what I mean. Like, okay, so Nika Ko gets a knockdown, one knockdown win, you know, and then Kokujin comes back the next round, gets one one um, ice cream scooper, and yeah. finish the whole round off without <laughs> Nika Ko being able to breathe. And this just goes on and on and on and yeah. on for five games. That's that'd be a good match. Yeah. That was kind of like what that was kind of like Lloyd's match versus Neobon last year, right? At TFC. I don't, I know don't, if you saw I don't that. remember. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. 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 It was just like, just basically them putting each other in situations where they have to guess. Okay. So, uh, so Lloyd versus, uh, Lloyd versus, uh, Kokujin. Any, any other yeah. matches? Um, well, nobody wants to watch me play. So, I'm no, I mean, not, who would you play? I'm, I'm definitely not in there. Huh? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe a tag team match. Um, tag team. Match. Tag team yeah. Tag team. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I'm I my best match is probably against Yoon because I play against Pyro a lot. So uh-huh. maybe I'll put myself against one of the Yoon players for the uh-huh. Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk Something a little. Like that. Let's talk a little bit about Pyro actually. So okay. I couldn't help but last year at TFC, Pyro seemed to be around for a lot of the event in terms of in the chat and watching the stream. <laughs> um, yeah. Like. Obviously, you're not him, so you know I don't know if, how much you can speak for him. But you know, I can't think of any other American player that would that that anyone else would like to see, you know, come to TFC than than Pyro. I'm, I, I I guess speaking for me, I would love to see Pyro come. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What's uh, what, what's going on? I mean, because you just ran off like like there are like all these people coming from SoCal, and you know what's what's um... uh. What's Pyro's issue? I mean, is that something I'm gonna have to ask himself, or I mean, what what do you? Uh, maybe uh, maybe we can have Kaz call in later and we can talk about that. <laughs> okay. You know? But um, okay. Let me ask it another way. If Pyro went to TFC last year, yeah. Honestly, okay, because I know, like, you know, obviously you guys are friends and everything, but like knowing how much he plays now, if he came last year, how would he be done? He's not a player. He, he he's not a player that will show up to a tournament and not prepare himself. So uh-huh. you can't really answer the question of saying, um, considering how much he plays today. Well, say he prepared he as much as you did. If he prepared for him, he would be in the top three for sure. Okay. He's got he's got tournament magic that nobody else has. Can can you be a little more specific? Like what are some he's of got the tur- things that he's got tournament magic? Just... I, I, <laughs> just... I can't explain it. He's, he's got just... tournament magic. I'm he's... telling you. He's just got that that clutch gene, that 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 it factor. That I wouldn't that, even call it a clutch. The, the mamba gene. blood. The mamba. It's not the mamba blood. <laughs> not the mamba it's blood. Not the clutch gene. It's just. It's 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 the um, it's the white guy at at the uh, YMCA <laughs> that balls you up, man. Like, I can't explain it. He he he's got the uh, he's got magic. And so, you can't put a price on magic, and you can't teach that magic to anybody. So, what would it take for Pyro to come to TFC? We'd have to uh, kidnap him, knock him out unconscious, and when he wakes up, he's in a, he's on a cabinet at TFC. Wow, that, that's all that that's all that it would take, right? Yeah. No, no money or nothing. Just you'd have to I kidnap mean, people, him. People already offered. I think Lance has already offered. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I hope. Oh man. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. I have this sticky feeling that you know we've seen the last of Pyro Lee. No, he plays. He, he's I'm sure he plays. Week. I know he plays. But he's like, there every week. But in terms of going to TF, an event like TFC, I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I mean, uh, let's let's hope for the best. Maybe as a change of heart. Uh-huh. But I think maybe like you know, I'm not him, or I don't speak for him. But I feel uh-huh. like maybe he's you know seeing how much fun everybody is having at TFC 
will will make him you know he's he's close you know he's close to having a change of heart that's the thing I like I, I never really knew pyro very well but i really i don't i don't i never really understood what like what he considered as fun aside from winning in third strike because like the guy's a winner right like i know you talk about magic yeah, yeah. But, like the, the, the if there's one word like if you told me like i only had one word to describe certain players like and you showed me a picture of pyro the yeah. word that i would use is winner yeah right absolutely he, he's a winner so like it's it's i think i think it's tough for him because um he has you know he's built up such a big legacy mm. you know and then for him to come here and put all that whole legacy on the line it's a lot of pressure um i think you know a lot of these top guys right now um nika ko and um yuki and you know the a lot of these top guys they're they want a piece of him too you know they want to they do you know Absolutely, and it's it's. I think there's a lot of pressure, so sometimes it might be hard to face all of that all at once. You know, everybody. You know, it's all eyes on him. If Pyro Lee shows up, I think Pyro Lee shows up. He's bigger than the Japanese showing. I up think so too. Yeah. I think so too, because no yeah. one's seen him. Like you know, he's like no one's seen him in a, in, a, in a really long time. Yeah, yeah, but he can. You know, he can still play. So yeah. So aside from the uh, generals battle, which is probably going to be really big. Maybe the biggest generals battle in American Third Strike history. I mean, um, there are ten SoCal players coming alone. Or like yeah. Nine. So I don't yeah. know how you guys are. Gonna I don't know how organize. it's gonna work. They haven't really talked about the details. They said they were gonna make like four teams, four different generals. Then what? it's like it's, it's not really it's not really a general. It's not battle. really it's east versus like, west anymore. Yeah. It's just a four. Yeah, it's it's north versus west versus south. Versus you know, it kind of turns into a four team. You know, it's kind of turns into a four team survivor series at yeah. that point. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I do, I, I definitely do feel like they're trying to pack in a little too much for this year's TFC. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to do a little too much. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. uh, there's also going to be a pre co-op cup tournament. Yeah. Well, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Um, I, 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 I think it's. I mean, we tried it out last year. Um, unfortunately, America doesn't have the character expertise. You yeah. know, you're not going to field a team of five Hugos, and you're not going to field <laughs> a team of five, five Alexes. So uh -huh. it's tough to really, you know, it's tough to really. Be serious. I think. Uh -huh. I feel like what they should have done is make it, make it three on three. That would have had it, you know, a little better chance of it to feel a team of three Hugos. Because you know, as as a Ken player, I want to play with a team of Ken specialists. You know, yeah. and I'm sure, and that's pride in being a Ken player. Uh -huh. I'm sure you being a Necro player, don't you don't want to play with a guy who doesn't even take Necro seriously, right? You would want like a Necro. You would you would need Slime Lord. Um, right, <laughs> it would, it, you wouldn't need Slime Lord to, and um, God, yeah, that's uh, it, that's it. Uh, Tom C, that that's Tom it right C. there. You, <laughs> you would need Tom C to uh, rise from his grave, uh -huh. and Slime Lord, and you would be a team of three. You know, as that yeah. that would be a serious team. But I think, in a, but to field five, it it's almost impossible. I yeah, feel right. Like. Like five Urians from from America, like five Urians is actually the the only doable. team that's actually legit this year. Oh yeah, like Kaz, Cruz, yeah, yeah, RX, those guys, yeah, those guys get to be on RX's team. Yeah, yeah. fuckers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So uh, I, I think it's tough to do five on five co op. Um, I think there is a big difference in skill gap. Like for example, you do a team of five with. Let's say Ko is the uh, head of the Yang team, and then you have, you know, two and three are decent, and then you have four and five who just absolutely don't even know how to play the game. And Ko is going to carry them into the finals, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have, you know, these guys that barely know how to play the game on stage in the finals. I'm not really a fan of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it it makes it doesn't make for good television. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so, aside from the pre co op cup, there's also a traditional team tournament. Yeah. 3v3. Right? And yeah. so, uh, who are you teaming up for that? <clears throat> Is that a I'm top with... secret right now? Or no, no well, there's, there's no secret. Okay. Um, we are the Allied Powers. Allied um, Powers. Yes, it's me, uh -huh. Ryan, uh -huh. and Neobon. Oh, wow. So, Neobon from France, America and France together, the Allied Powers. We're trying to. Take down the uh, the Japanese. 
Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, Nia Bond is super sick. I mean, he's, he's, he's really sick. Um, and obviously, Ryan's super solid, too. Yeah. Are, are there any other th teams that you know of? I, I'm, obviously, I'm out of the loop, but um, I don't um, know if there are any other 3v3. I know that uh, I've heard that Frankie, Nika, and Gavin yeah, are teaming. Definitely, the New York team. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of teams over here. I think it's uh, Kaz, Kang, and Lance. The, the, is that they, right? Yeah. They should have gotten someone else with, like, the K name, then they could have been the KKK. You know, oh, but... yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They need to kick Lance off the team. But there's no one else that has the K name. Is there um... Kazzy, Kang, and... Yeah, I don't... Cole? I don't know. No, yeah. no, no. That's not it. Okay, so, uh... so another thing that you wanted to talk about, and then obviously singles, and that is a lot. <laughs> it's, a lot. it's a lot. I think we're, we're trying to do a little too much, and... You know, it, it, plus everybody wants to play against Japanese players. Um, there's uh -huh. going to be exhibitions and probably like, you know, other first to fives. I think it might be a little draining. Um, uh -huh. My idea, I was thinking about this on my way home from work, but it'd be best if we can do two events a year, you know, one, one uh -huh. in each side of the uh, calendar year. Uh -huh. you, you know, we can kind of split it up. One, we can have half the events on one and half on the other one, uh -huh. you know. That would, that's what I thought would have been better. I think we're. I definitely think we're packing a little too much in here this year. Mm. I mean, I, I don't doubt that it's going to be a good event. It's still going to be a ton of fun, but I, I just think it's we're trying to trying to do a little too much. Mm -hmm. Keep so, it simple, you know. Yeah. So, um, in terms of like what you're looking for, in terms of you know individual players, because I know you said that you were uh, that that you know a lot of players last year caught your eye. I mean, what are some of the things that you're looking, that you're sort of looking for, like in terms of specific players this year, like in terms of like how they perform or what they do? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I mean, I only speak for my players over here. Uh -huh. um, I expect Kaz to go to and out as usual. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I would, I would really like to see all of my players step up and uh -huh. use the experience that they gain from this tournament to really make themselves a better player when they come back. Mm. I think like Sherwin was telling me last year, like that trip really like opened his eyes. Um, you know, it's kind of like we make a trip to Japan, you go there, you kind of level up, you come home and you know, you really improve as a player mm -hmm. for a lot of these players that are going, coming from SoCal, like B Tran. I don't think he's ever played in an offline <laughs> tournament in his life. <laughs> Yeah. So I hope I hope that he can, um, you know, use do his best. It's tough. Can you imagine being in your first tournament? Like, yeah, yeah. In your first tournament is TFC. Yeah. You know, my first tournament at FFA, dude. I went two and out, and I still remember it. I was, dude, uh -huh. my hands were shaking and wobbly. So uh -huh. it's a lot of pressure for him to handle. But I think you know, if he can handle it, he can come back and become a lot better player because of the experience gained from mm -hmm. you know this kind of event. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I want to see, I, I hope all of them step up and, you know, make, make their mark in the tournament. They don't have to win. They don't have to make top eight, maybe try, but make, make their mark, you know, be, you know, play, play to show people who you are. Don't play to just squeak out wins. I want to see them go out there and play at the ability that they're able to play. Not, mm -hmm. not, you know, seize the moment. So. You know, aside from yourself, obviously, but who do you think you'd have you had the highest expectations for in terms of SoCal? Like everyone going to SoCal. Like, who, who well, I think? have no expectations for Kaz. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think Mark's, Mark's going to do better than Kaz in the tournament, probably. Wow, um, wow, wow. Okay. Kaz is going to combust and kill himself on the way home. Um, I, I, I expect Sherwin to do a lot better than he did last year. Mm. Uh, he's definitely motivated. Um, so I... I I mean, top eight this year is going to be really tough to make. You, know, yeah. you have five Japanese players. You have a lot of top American players. But for sure, when I think he needs to be at least on the cusp of top eight, maybe playing for a spot in top eight at least. Mm -hmm. to, for him to call a successful trip, that's got to be the mentality. Um, yeah, I, I, I expect... I, I forgot who's on... Um, who B Tran is B Tran? Oh, he B Tran's team for the three on three is uh, Red Venom and Renick. Mm -hmm. So it's 
so it's a you know a, a very a old time veteran um, and two up and coming players. I I expect them to play really well in teams. Yeah. Maybe not in you know not in singles because it's a little tougher for them. Um, but I expect them as a team. I have ex- high expectations for them as a team to you know to show us something. I, I I don't know how you felt about it, but back in the day, I felt like like Ty was the guy that I never wanted to play in a team tournament. I will. I would love to play against Ty. In a team <laughs> <tournament>. <laughs> um, no, but man, he's a, he is probably definitely without a doubt the best Alex player in America. Um, he grinds it out so well, you know. Yeah. It might not make it look pretty, but when it comes tournament time, when the lights are on, he turns into a completely different player. He's really tough to beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can grind it out. He can, you know, he hits you with stuff. He makes some really good reads, really clutch reads in tournaments. So, yeah, I would love to see how they do. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm definitely. Uh, I definitely think Ty's going to do really well. He, but know? he hasn't played in a long time. Well, that's true. Yeah. I don't we'll know. See. I just we'll have a him. feeling that Ty's going to do well in the team tournament. I don't know why. I would, I would love to see him, you know, play well in the tournament along with his team. Because, you know, even though he hasn't practiced, I mean, there's not a whole lot of competent Alex players in America, you know? I think Hold That is, hold that is really strong. Yeah, Hold That's strong. Um, He's another, yeah, very grinded out as yeah. well. You know, you it know, doesn't make it look pretty. Yeah, Dur- Duralath is a little too offensive for me, but you know he can he can surprise people every now and then. But but yeah. aside from that, I mean it's it's you know Alex is another one of those you know characters, right? That America doesn't really have too much you know uh, too much uh, experience in you know at least you know competent Alex players. So that's yeah, why I think yeah. they might balance each. They might cancel each other out. You know, that's uh, ties, well. That's that's going to be a good mix to yeah. It's going to be a good mix to watch com- combust and yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, aside from the SoCal players, I mean, are there uh, other players from other regions that you're you're sort of looking forward to seeing yeah, how how, how they've grown and how they play? Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> looking forward to playing against Cameron Buckner. <laughs> <laughs> Grimlock. It's been, a, it's been a long time um, since I've known the guy. You know, he's been a big part of the scene for ever since I started playing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that one. Did did, did he ever go to family? No, I don't think he's ever left. Have you ever? Place. Have you played him offline before? No, I've never. <laughs> no, no, no way. Yeah, Pyro's played, played him, right? Have, ever left. Have, was you ever, have you played him offline? Pyro's before? played him. They went to Nebraska for no, a tournament I've back in never, 2002. Yeah. yeah, no, but shout outs to to Grimlock, man. He's yeah. The fact I, that he's I hope going, to see him. Yeah, yeah definitely, he's, definitely. He's definitely a contributor to our uh, to our scene, to our community. Yeah. So um, once again, guys, you're on the Mutant Experience podcast with Five Star Yi Wang. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link uh, so, um, once again, guys, the address yeah. to the Discord. And so um, for anyone who wants to uh, ask Yi any questions live uh, on the podcast, um, just click on that link and we'll make sure we get you uh, uh, on the stream. And so um, one last thing I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, TFC Yi. Um, so earlier you were saying that you were uh, working on certain specific things. I mean, is there anything that – can you be more specific than that or you, you just don't want to show your cards? What or, do you mean? Because like, you said that, like, the way that you're sort of planning for TFC is that you're coming every week with, like, something specific that you're working on. You know, are you talking about tech? Are you talking about matchups? What are you talking about? Um, A little well, bit of everything? I, I, well, to give some background, I've definitely changed my mindset about tournament play a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, the first time I really – um, changed my mindset was when I went to New York and I played against Van Al and RKF. Okay. Um, before when I played, before when I approached tournaments, especially if there's Japanese players in them, I try to play like, you know, super safe, super perfect, 100%, you know, not, not try the uh, risky moves just to try to get wins, you know. But that year when I went to New York, I told everybody back home, I said, I'm going to go there and I'm going to style on them, you know. I'm going to play what I know I'm capable of playing. Mm-hmm. And so my mindset this year is like, you know, a lot of players, I think when they see Japanese players, they kind of get intimidated. Um, mm-hmm. They get hit in the mouth and then they kind of, they kind of curl up and not play their game. Um, mm-hmm. I want to, if I want to play against the Japanese players this year and I want to, if they punch me in the mouth, I want to punch them right back. So 
definitely I'm working on doing sick things, you know, to make mm. the crowd go, wow, you did that to a Japanese player. <laughs> while winning, though, right? I mean, while winning, yes, while, yes, <laughs> while winning. Yes. Okay, okay. No, that, that's interesting because, you know, one of the things that I noticed when I was in Japan is everyone plays so safe. Yeah. Like, just, just super, super, super safe. And, um, so yeah, that's a, that, that's a, that's an interesting mindset going in there, um, and wanting to, uh, impress, uh, but you're right. You know, you can't sort of, you can't underestimate yourself. You know, you can't shortchange yourself. You have to be there. You have to be confident, I guess. Cause so many of these players, they, they kind of lose before the game even starts. You know, Absolutely. they kind of, they kind of go, Oh, who am I playing? Oh shit. But it's yeah, like, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough, but yeah. So it doesn't seem like there are any questions uh, uh, this go around. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our final break. Uh, but when we come back, this is a segment you definitely don't want to miss. Um, I know you, you wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the differences uh, between uh, the U.S. and the Japanese approach well, I don't, to the game. It's not really like Japanese approach, but it's or, just my approach. Or just your approach. Yeah, my personal approach. This is the, yeah. like the Kobe system? This is the five-star system? Yeah, I guess this is the, this is the uh, five-star system. The five-star yeah. system? My, so... my personal approach, yeah. Okay. So you guys definitely don't want to miss uh, the next segment where uh, he gives you uh, his uh, five-star system uh, to third strike. So once again, guys, you're watching the Mutant Experience, and um, we'll be back in a couple minutes. So uh, stick around.
All right, guys. Welcome to welcome back to tonight's mutant experience. Once again, as my uh, my special guest, I have on a uh, five star Yi Wang, and so we actually have on last week's guest, Chodakon one two three. Uh, so, Colin, you want to do a ask Yi a question? I did. All right. Um, because there are so few offline scenes in the U.S. I mean, we do have New York, California. And Texas, pretty much, that sums up the offline scenes. What do you think are the most important things for online players to practice? And since we've already discussed that it's probably not best to have the mentality where you play to win, necessarily, um, what are important for those type of players to improve upon? Whether it be, you know, red parries, hit confirms, training mode things, or should they be focusing on trying to get as much matchup experience as possible, even if it's not against top quality players? It's it's kind of it's kind of hard. Like I've, the times that I've played online, I've never been able to practice. You know the things that I want to practice. It seems almost impossible. Maybe I'm not used to online, so that's kind of tough for me. Um, but I think that they have to kind of change their mentality of playing, taking online seriously. I think you know there's been a long stigma that you know online is you know not not real third strike which you know from my opinion because i i've played offline my whole life i i've you know i've obviously been a proponent of that but i think just because um i think that people a lot of online players don't really play their game seriously because they're like oh it's online wins and losses don't really count um you know even though i lose this player a hundred times in a row it doesn't mean he's really better than me I think they need to change that mindset um, and play more seriously and stop using, you know, spending too much time using secondary characters. My mindset, like, it's this is, like, part of my five-star system, I guess. It's like, dude, we're already, we already so far behind the Japanese with our main characters, and we're not even that good with our main characters, but here we are wasting hours and hours on end playing our second, third, fourth, fifth character. I don't, I don't, I don't know why we do that, you know? I, and like you know, I, I show up to Don's. I don't play any other character but Ken. Every single time it's Ken. I just want to practice my character. So, but I don't know these online players. You know, they spend too much time just dicking around because it's not serious. Because it's already considered not serious play. I think they waste too much time that can be spent actually improving themselves with their character and in the game. They waste too much time with that. You know, playing Lance Makoto or something. A follow up question then. Um, you have players like Cameron, and you have other players <laughs> with similar mentalities okay. that they do not have a main. And also, like, what do you think of that? And do you think that players should yeah. always have a main? And also, because you, you mentioned that, you know, players are playing their secondary, their third yeah. string I mean, characters, etc. Do you think that there is no benefit to learning other characters, especially in situations where there are not players that are skilled with those characters that you can play against. Well, I, I, just, that... I just feel like if I showed up to the arcade and I started playing all these other characters, um, it would set a bad example to other players that it's okay for them to play other characters as well. So that's why I just play Ken every single time. If You can only control what you, you do. So if there's guys like Cameron and other guys that want to play a million characters, you can't really, you know, they've been playing this game for 16 years this way, 15 years they're probably not going to change right now. So you're just in control of your own your own actions. Okay. A anything else, Colin? Nope. All set. Okay, Thanks, great. Man. All right, cool. So that's something we haven't really talked about, ye online play. Because, um, you know, the, the, the last three guests I had online were uh, Shotokan, AC Slayer, and Denges. And, and all three of them play online a lot and i remember and, and and you know and uh j just to kind of uh you know obviously you got to play denges uh at fight club three yeah and so i mean what was your sort of estimation of him as a player well very very impressive player very um, fundamentals and basics are you know uh -huh. in my opinion top five in america in terms of his fundamentals and uh -huh. basics like Rarely do I see a player like as, you know, in his play is very intelligent, you know. Uh -huh. You don't really see a lot of, you know, there's a lot of players that might win more than him that have a better win rate. But uh -huh. in terms of, like, playing the game the right way and doing the right moves, he he's top top in my book. And so, I'm very impressed by his play, yeah. So, I don't know, like, maybe he needs to be the one to teach people how to do it online because 
he played what mostly ninety percent online, right? Yeah, because I, I I guess that was the point I'm trying to make is like you know he he started offline obviously. Um, according to him in the last podcast, the first person he played offline was me at CF. I don't even remember, <laughs> but um, yeah. but um, but but mostly he learned the game like the ins and outs of the game online. But but he but uh, but he would go to CF and and I guess apply those things that he learned offline. Yeah. Um, I, I think he takes a very serious approach to the game. Like he's a, he's he's a student of the game. Like he takes the same approach I do. Like he studies, you know, he studies matches, matchups, characters, players methodically. You know, like he, dude. I mean, you go look up YouTube and you see a DK Blade comment on every every YouTube video, <laughs> right? Is that is that what it just all boils down to, though? You just how seriously you take. The I game? think he's very dedicated. You know, he's he's just a student of the game. Definitely mm-hmm. um, puts in a lot of effort, and it shows. You can't you can't be you can't play the way he plays without having put in the due diligence. So, mm-hmm. and so, I think other players need to make an effort like him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with just kind of looking yourself in the mirror and asking, you know, how seriously do you take this game and. How, how, just exactly how, how much better you really do want to get. So uh, let, let's just go through some of the questions that are in the chat, um, you know, before we end this, uh, the podcast. So Fighter's Destiny has a question. Um, and I don't think the answer is going to be that <laughs> that interesting. But um, his question is, uh, Five Star, who is your favorite person to play? Um... Favorite. I mean, I can talk about who I hate playing. That's a lot easier. <laughs> That's a lot easier. Um, who's my favorite person to play? Well, I, I like I like playing against Pyro a lot. He's uh-huh. he's been my rival for for ever since I've been playing. Uh-huh. We have, you know, I I definitely have my best moments. You know, best my best play against him. Uh-huh. This is definitely one of my favorite players to play against. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 talk about some of the players you hate playing. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. God, where do I start? <laughs> where should I start? Should you start I, at the top of the list. Top five. Should we should we count down from five? From should five to one. Five? Okay, five to one. Okay. Five to one. All right. I, I hate um, I hate nice guy Mark Urian. It's like, <laughs> you know, this game is my comment about this game is this game is kind of flawed because I Mark's not Mark doesn't have a lot of moves in the game. And I've taken every single. I should have taken every single move that he does away from him uh-huh. because I punished all of them. Uh-huh. But because he's Mark, he still does it, and he still gets me with it, and I fucking hate it. Okay. Uh, he <laughs> does knee drops from half know, screen, you know, full it screen, <laughs> and it hits. And um, yeah, I, I, I losing to Mark is one of the worst feelings in the world. Okay. It's, yeah, I, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. Okay. I throw my hands up in disgust. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so number four, what would it work? Um, God, number four. All time, all time, obviously. All time. This, I mean, I, I want to... Yang players, like Rom and <laughs> Nika Ko. Dude, okay. I hate them. I, I hate them. <laughs> really hate them. Okay. And I, uh, I guess you touched on why you hated them, right? <laughs> Just that constant pressure, constant forcing oh, well, you to. A lot, Rom is a lot different than uh, Nika Ko. He's oh yeah, yeah. More, he's like, you know, he's more calculated. Mm-hmm. He calculates. It's both are both are fucking both are really really good players. And mm-hmm. Rom gets you in the corner and he gets you in that Yang neutral grab, uh, 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 and you're like, you know, <laughs> you're trying so hard to block the slashes, and then you got to wake up and try to mash out. And all of a sudden, he's activating the same boo, and you're just like, fuck, man, fuck. <laughs> it's tough. It's really tough. So, yeah. Yang players, all of them, every single one of them, <laughs> worldwide. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, number three, dude, I, Amir, Amir, I hated playing Amir. He was so hard to beat. Just At the time, yeah. God. It's like no matter what I did, he just roundhouse supered out of everything. <laughs> I That's the God button. I always call that the God so, button. That's the... He was really difficult. Um, nothing worked against him. <laughs> Man, it's it like, dude, like he. I think against him, like I, I just got like he can make you freeze. He's just so offensive, and he just uh-huh. starts kicking brains out with Chun Li. It's really hard. It's really really hard. 
I remember for a well, long time, like Amir had that streak against Pyro, like he ran bats. Unbeatable. It was. I'm yeah. telling you, this is like really, really unbeatable. And I, dude, Amir can come back right now and still beat me. It's, yeah. it's yeah, for sure, for sure. It's he had he has some. I have some kind of mental block with Amir for sure. I don't know if it was like one ran bat or two in a row, but remember he like all of a sudden picked up Denjin Ryu. And a ran bat, and he beat Pyro too. Um, and... He picked Tan, and he beat Pyro, and he picked Remy, and almost <laughs> me with Remy. Dude, yeah, he was just—he just it's something about the way he plays was—it uh-huh. it was like you shouldn't be able to play like that and win. But uh-huh. that's why I hated because he was able to do things that I couldn't do and okay. win win like that. Yeah. So he was. What, what was he? Number two. Was he three. Number two? That's what he was. Number, number three. three. Okay, number two. Two. Um. All okay. These. Chun Li players that have absolutely no skill. Um, Chun Li players that have no skill. Okay. Yeah, like Shadini, for example. Like <laughs> Shadini and Kai, like you know, like absolute mindless Chun Li, just abusing the shit out of the character, abusing every every little advantage you have with the character. I hate. Oh, I hate those players. I hated those players because losing to them felt really bad. Like I, I spent so much effort, you know, playing this game, and they just. Hey, 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 roundhouse. Hey, hey, car throw. You know, it's like, fuck, low forward. Okay. Like, they would, they would like, you know, I never use the word turtling because I don't feel like, you know, it's, it's used correctly. But the way they turtled was fucking, you know, I hated it. I, I can't explain it. Um, and they just relied on Chun-Li to win games. And it's, you know, you, you play so smart setting them up and one thing goes wrong and next thing you know it, you're losing. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, do, yeah. do you know this feeling? Yeah, yeah. I do. Right. I definitely do. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Good. Like, like what I mean is skillless, good Chun Li players. Yeah. Well, do you, does that make sense? Yeah. I think like, it's the only character in Third Strike that you can be really bad at the game, but still be really good. Is that those kind of Chun Li players? Yeah. I, mean, I guess it all depends on how you define skill, right? Like, I, I, it seems I'm like sure you're. It's, it seems like you're not defining skill as in execution wise or anything. You're, well, you're, that's you're... why they play Chun Li because they lack execution. Yeah, right, I so... mean, third strike in terms of execution isn't the most difficult. So. No, I, I think it's. I think it's one of the more. Uh, I think it's one of the more lenient games. Yeah, it's very lenient. Of... Yeah, it's very lenient. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, nothing in the game execution wise is very. Is not hard to do, but these guys were so bad that they had to play Chun Li. Yeah. yeah. Remember they that. Remember that money match Kai had with Fat Bear? Yeah, they were talking about it right now. <laughs> oh they... God! How... Yeah. Oh my God! I mean, I'm in the front row. I'm sitting in the front row of this money match. I'm, uh... I'm like, I'm like Don King in this money match. I'm egging it on. I'm egging this money match on. Like, I, know. I don't even understand how that even became a money match. Like... I'm not sure why it's why it, it was a money match. You know, two, you know, really, really poor Chun Li players. Yeah. Um, First to ten, yeah. it was you know it wasn't fun. It wasn't yeah. it was not a good match. Yeah. It's like it's like if like Mark Henry and like I don't know like Mark Henry and <laughs> badass Billy Gunn main evented a WrestleMania or something. Billy Gunn is awesome. Are you serious? <laughs> no, you can't throw him in there like that. Yeah, like <laughs> sexual chocolate and like D'Lo Brown fighting against each other. That's that would, that would be it. Yeah. And so number one, what's uh... number one? Mutant XP Necro. <laughs> Dude, I do it. I'm, I'm I do you, it. Dude, the way he plays against me is just while he has me down to a T. I can't do anything. <laughs> That's I, not I, true. I can't, I can't mount any offense, and it's I don't know. Like I watch other guys, I'm like, oh yeah, they're just beating him up like this and that, and then here <laughs> I go and try, and it's like, nope, none of this works. That that doesn't work. What's going on? I don't I don't know. You know. Well, you did yeah. beat me last year. But oh, I don't know how that happened. I don't think I should have, but. You know, it's 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 a very stressful match. I'd rather play against Chun Li. Really, you'd rather play against Chun Li sure. than my Necro. You've, you've <laughs> like ruined. You've like, dude. I I lose to everybody's Necro now. Like you've um, <laughs> you've set this mental block in there for me. Like, dude, I was at Dom's arcade and this random guy shows up with a hat and beat me with Necro. I'm like, what's going on? And, you know, it's it's t- it's like I'm <laughs> I see Necro. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I just. I feel like that character was just designed to beat Ken. No, it's not. It's not. (laughs) Not the way you play it is designed to beat Ken. But that character is not like I go and study the Kuroda tapes because Kuroda Ken tape has a lot of Necro in there. Yeah, it does. And it's that doesn't work for me. It doesn't work. Yeah. So (laughs) Necro PTSD, Kaz, absolutely. 
for sure. It's okay. it's like, dude, I see it and I'm like, fuck, I don't want, um, I don't want to see, I don't want to see Necro in my bracket. I don't care who it is. You, so you, you hear that, Rico, aka Isco from Austin. Hopefully you, uh, hopefully you face five star uh, at TFC <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just start swinging those standing strongs, and I'm like, I'm like, I just freeze up. Yeah. Those, those standing <laughs> strongs over and over. I'm like, oh god. Yeah. You, you know, you know, uh, there's this uh, New York Ken player. His name was Green Tea. Yeah, and, yeah, I've uh, seen it before. You know, he used to, uh, he used to, uh, he used to do supers to punish my with standing strongs like like for sure like he wasn't like there's no way he could be reacting to him like like there's just <laughs> no way like unless he's like buffering the motion and then like right when he sees the strong he hits the, the kick button yeah but like he would punish my whiff standing strong with sa3 i don't think that's effective that, because, that, that like, can't be possible i don't think that can't shape. be a good move because you have to give up blocking position to buffer yeah right you see what i'm saying like yeah. you can't buffer and block at the same time and you have to stand in the perfect range and you know it's not like necro's only move is standing strong yeah <laughs> you're sitting there buffering so you can just do the uh the uh the the command grab throw uh -huh. me into the corner you know that's not a good situation <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't think it's a, a viable strategy for sure. But, That's uh, definitely not a viable strategy. When you first did that, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, That's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, he's got to be, he's not human, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Gotta be, yeah. Definitely. All right, so um, let's, uh, I guess now's a good time as any. You know, actually, I think everyone on the internet was anticipating your, your podcast, Yee, because, you know, in terms of uh, online third strike, it's been a, it's been a pretty clean week. You know, but um. Oh wait, Colin. Uh, Colin reminds me um about your five star system. Um, I know we talked a little bit about it already. Yeah. But are, are there other things about the five star system? Um. Well, it's, this is a brand new system. It's about thirty minutes old. <laughs> thirty so, minutes old. Okay. Um, we're still working out the kinks here. Uh huh. Um. No, I just you know I just challenge players to spend more time practicing instead of trying to win. <laughs> you know that's that's definitely my main thing. Like you know think think about. <laughs> Think, think about it during the week. You're going to show up, you know, you're going to show up to play every week. Uh -huh. Think about, it, you know, like, what do you want to work on today? Uh -huh. Some new moves every day, you know, like something uh -huh. new. Some, you know, like, I, I got a compliment once from a player. He said that every single time I watch you play, you, you always have something, you're always doing something new. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think that's, that was, that's a compliment that I really liked because I, I'm always trying new things, you know, always adding, you know, new moves, doing moves differently. I mean, and a, a lot of these players, I see them. They're so they're so caught up in trying to win games that mm -hmm. they don't ever try to. They don't step out into something that they're uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, every single time I try new moves, I'm vulnerable to losing, mm -hmm. and you know I'm fine with that because it. You know, once I learn, once I perfect that move, and I can use it, you know, strategi strategically well, then I become a better player. And I feel like a lot of players, they don't try to do that. Like, for example, for example, um, since, since our buddy Kaz is in here, um, <laughs> my, my matches with Kaz has been the same for the last two, three, two years. I think every single time Kaz plays me seriously, uh -huh. he, this is his strategy. His strategy is to um, try to build meters safely and uh -huh. try to get some pokes in on me. You know, like try to get, get some, try to, I call it try to steal some damage. Mm -hmm. try to steal some you know damage that you didn't really earn um and that's that's how he starts the round and then when he when he gets meter he'll try to get me with the ex headbutt or he's too in love with um after ages ends he likes to do the walk up low parry tea bag <laughs> try to make you whip a grab uh -huh. and you know try to get a low parry it's like bro i know you want to do that you know You've been trying to do that for the last two years. It's worked maybe three times in the last three calendar years. It's time to try something new. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I just challenge players to have different matches with me. You know, the players that play with me consistent, consecutively, I don't want our matches to look the same every single time. You know, and you're not getting better because you're, you're, the matches are the same every time. The players that I see getting better, our matches are changing always. Mm -hmm. like when I play Pyro, like we've progressed so much in all of our plays mm -hmm. because we keep you know, changing up our play. We keep trying out new moves. But you know, a lot of these other players, they're so caught up in winning because that's, that's the only move that they've done that's given them wins. So they keep going back to it. 
I challenge them to like find out new moves, get uncomfortable, get your feet wet, and then try it out. If it works, then then keep trying it, and then you can perfect it and have new moves. I li- I like getting hit by new moves. When I'm playing at Don's, I get hit by new moves. You can hear me on the camera going, "Oh, that's a really good move." I re- oh, that's great. You know, I get hit by old moves. I you know same moves every time I start rolling my eyes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The uh, third strike, roll your eyes. Like, <laughs> you, you know, are you fucking serious? Like this again? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and you know, just to kind of piggyback off that, people who love third strike and people who play it, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this but like third strike is designed in a way that you can play like that right e because like you know obviously you don't know a whole lot about modern games but you know the biggest (laughs) critique with modern games like sf4 sf5 is that there's really no way to play differently to win you know right like like everyone has to do the same thing to win yeah but third strike isn't designed that way and so it's a shame when you see players who are doing the same thing when they don't have to absolutely 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 it's like you know it's coming kaz i know you're gonna walk up and go up 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 up, 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 (laughs) hoping for hoping for a whiff grab and, and and a low parry you know, you, he does it in situations where he doesn't even need to land a crouching strong. Uh-huh. I mean, a crouching fears. I've seen him get like some guy down to like two more hits, and uh-huh. he's going for that. It's like, does that make any sense? You just need a throw and like a low forward, and you win. But you're trying to go for the, you know, <laughs> go for the kill shot for no reason. You yeah. know, it's a, you know, because oh, another thing is I also want players to work on kill moves. Like I was teaching kill I was moves. What do you mean, like max damage? Round round enders, round okay. enders. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. Like, I'm sure you have a lot of ways to win different rounds. Yeah. Right. You have ways to win the first round. You have ways to win the second round. You have w- w- ways to win the third round. Mm-hmm. You know, getting that last hit is the hardest hit to get in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, so I want pe- players to work on how to kill somebody, how to finish them off, and it's especially it's especially crucial in tournaments because then it's even harder to kill these guys off. Yeah. Like you said, the Japanese players play super safe. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine killing a Japanese player in a tournament? Yeah. You would need a good move to kill them. Yeah, just like little things, like from, from a Necro's perspective. Like one thing that really bugs me a lot is, you know, when a Necro player, you know, gets a dizzy in the first round and they waste meter to kill their opponent. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and all you had to do was go to trading mode and just kind of figure out, okay, there are other combos that can kill the opponent with this much life and you don't have to waste meter, you know, like it's just kind of like little things like that or like, like situations where, um, I mean, obviously there are like certain exceptions. Like for example, if I get like a bread and butter combo on someone and then they have like, you know, like a couple pixels life left, if I have a SA3 stock, um, you know, I'll like, I'll juggle. I'll juggle another SA3 just to win the round because, you know, I don't want that player to come back on me. You know, I mean, there are small exceptions like that. That's exactly my point about kill moves. Like, you want to do a move that doesn't give the other guy a chance to make a comeback. That's the kill move. Like, just end it right there. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think most players don't consider that they start using their moves in the beginning of the match. They start using their moves in the middle of the match. Like, Mm -hmm. mid mid match moves, beginning match moves. It's not Uh the same as late game moves, you know, Mm -hmm. late round moves, finishers. So mm-hmm. most I need I want players to develop how to finish a round, you know, and every round is different. First, second, third is different, you know, because mm-hmm. you can a player can be up one round, and then go for something crazy second round if he's losing because you know he's up a round. You know what I mean? So I love, every round. Every uh, round is there's different kill moves. Yeah, because the situation yeah. changes. Yeah, I like Kaz's. Yes. I like Kaz's comment. Game is great, hard. Great <laughs> comment. It's true. It's true. It's not. Yeah, it's different rounds, different characters, different uh-huh. you know, different everything. Yeah. You have to think about all of them. I have finishers for different characters. I have finishers for different players. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I play the matchup and the player. People always ask me, "Do you play the matchup and the player? Why can't I play both?" You know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's flawed to think that you play one or the other. So, so. Uh, Denges actually yes, has a I question. Can. He says, "In tournaments, how do you manage tournament nerves?" So you can play I'm, calm. You know, I mean, I'm I'm still very I'm, I still get nervous. I've been playing this. I've been playing tournament in tournaments for 16 years. So, uh-huh. yeah, it's um. I think the, the hardest matches for me are always the first round of the tournament. I always have the, I have a little. I'm always a little shaky in the first round of the tournament. Mm-hmm. It's kind of relatable to um like a like a baseball game. In in baseball, the runs that are scored the most are in the first inning. That's 
that's when runs the most runs are scored in any baseball game on average is mm-hmm. the first inning because the pitchers aren't settled in yet. Yeah. You know, they're kind of loose. They just came out to warm up or, you know, they came out to a big crowd. Mm-hmm. They're a little bit nervous. You know what I mean? And, and for me, the first round of a tournament is always the hardest. I'm, I struggle with that too. Um, first, dude, I've seen really bad players get a game off me in the first, you know, in the first round because I'm not, I'm not warmed up yet. So yeah, I, I deal with tournament nerves. Absolutely, still de- deal with tournament nerves. Um, you just kind of have to get comfortable, and it comes and goes. So, um, also, I guess a lot of tournament nerves is the fear of losing. You kind of have to over, you know, prepare yes. yourself. Well, yeah. Most of the tournament nerves is the fear of losing. Um, yeah. a lot, and I think the players that are the most nervous are the players that have the most to lose. Um, you, Denjiz, you talk a lot of shit. So, you know, the pressure's on you. So that's why you're nervous because, you know, you don't want to lose and have people be like, oh, look at this guy talking all this shit, but he can't even win. Um, plus, you play a character that's really difficult to, you know, win in tournaments, two out of three against a top tier character. So a lot of pressure is on you. You know, so that's why you feel even more tournament nerves. You kind of have to separate your, when you're playing, I, I try to tell people, you got to have to like, you can't mind anything that's going on. You just have to be uh-huh. in the zone, you know, just focused on what you're doing. Don't worry about what people are going to say. Don't worry about what people are going to, you know, people are going to do whatever it is. You, you just have to focus on what you're doing. Definitely, definitely. Just, just maintaining that focus. It's hard. It's, it's really tough. <sighs> it is? Yeah. There's people screaming at you, you know, people are trying to, people are talking shit, trying to throw you off your game, so. Mm-hmm. Definitely when you're a player like Denjiz, you know, it's hard. But that's why I want to see him at TFC this year. Yeah, it'd, it'd be a great to see him at TFC. But he's he's scared, I think. Oh, okay, well. Uh... I, I feel, I, I can sense, I mean, I don't I mean that in a bad way, I feel like, I, I sense like, you know, some fear in him showing up. Well, we, we all have some level of fear, I guess. And we're all yeah. afraid of different things. So speaking of which, um, we're getting to the end of the podcast. And so even though this has been a relatively clean week of online third strike, uh, I did manage just for you, Kaz, because this is Kaz's by far his favorite part of the podcast. He doesn't That's even listen. It's, you know, it's, it's like him. It's like, it's like watching <laughs> Kaz play. Maybe it makes him feel better. I don't know. Like, But um. But once again, guys, uh, now it's time for uh, this week's uh, Pack It Up. And so, um, like I said before, I think people knew you were coming on the podcast because, you know, I found it particularly more difficult to find nominees uh, uh, for this week's uh, Pack It Up. I was hoping you would find my bloopers. Oh, to find five-star bloopers? Yeah, I was hoping for that, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. I know where all of them are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, like when Mark Mark gets me with knee drops. You just gotta look for Mark videos. <laughs> just you versus NG Mark. <laughs> Mark, yeah. Mark's right. Mark's right. got my top five. So, um, I, I'm 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 looking forward to uh, hearing what you think about some of these um some of these clips. So for those of you who are uh, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with this part of the podcast, um, basically every week I uh, scour the internet for um some unique examples of third strike play online and um basically i come up with the uh what i feel are the top five nominees and i want you guys to uh tweet me and let me know what you guys think so uh without further ado since we're running a little late we're just gonna get right into it and so uh without further ado here is uh this week's edition of uh pack it up let me uh let me uh do something really quick yeah. Okay. All right. You ready? All right, Kaz. Are you ready? All right. I think Kaz is ready. Okay. So uh, let's go Kaz ahead. Kaz is getting and, uh, his popcorn. Kaz he's is getting his, his popcorn. popcorn. His truffle salt popcorn. <laughs> All right. Pack it up. Nominee number one. Uh, here's a prime example of what not to do in the Oro Chun matchup. Watch as this Oro user gifts his opponent free damage while wasting meter in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice he used a super. Uh, nominee number two. Uh, more blender action on Pack It Up, but this week it's from 3SO. Watch as this Makoto player refuses to block this Ibuki's uh, day one mix ups. <laughs> I don't think he's refusing. I think he can't see it. He can't see it? 
<laughs> this looks like Tenren versus people at Bond's Arcade. I've, I've seen it. I'm telling you, it's tricky. All right, so uh, nominee number three. Um, this, this For some reason, this past week oh was filled with like, full-screen mishaps. Watch as oh this Makoto God. player is a little too hungry to respond to God. Hugo's taunt. That was insane. I love that. Oh, my God. I'm going to use that at Don's. <laughs> Nominee number four. Uh, this was actually a last-minute entry uh, that just had to be on this week's uh, Pack It Up. Watches this Koki player ping-pongs himself with the AP <laughs> reflectors. I love how the Urian just watches it. He's yeah, like, I'm right? not even going to hit like, him. Let me just watch this. You know, just watching him. And, and, and this last one is for Ty here. Um, this Chun-Li player finds out that punishing Alex's SA2 with full-screen oh, super dude, uh, I mean, this isn't as simple as it seems. <laughs> You know, just this jump. has happened to me before. Jump I punish. Did it on I did it on purpose. <laughs> so, I, mean, um, I did it on purpose knowing that it's going to grab you. It's going to grab you? You can't yeah, escape? Yeah, just okay. to like get a good laugh. I mean, I got up and killed him right after, but <laughs> that's a cool. Maybe he did it on purpose, too. Yeah, it looks like he did it on purpose. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right, so uh, those are uh, this week's uh, nominees for Pack It Up. Uh, let me know in the chat or tweet me and let me know uh, which one is... Uh, which one is your favorite? Uh, thanks, Art. Uh, I appreciate it. See, not not anyone can get on Pack It Up anymore, Yi. You know, it takes a... You know, I have to be very selective with this segment now. Yeah, this this one this one was pretty good. I, I caught a couple of the other ones, and I thought they were kind of... You know, it's, I'm sure it's tough. I don't even know how you um, found all these. Just, just... I just spend, like, a couple hours on YouTube, and I just... A couple hours. While, while I'm, like, you, while I'm do you doing something for? else. Like, how, do you, how do you find these videos? Well, on YouTube. Like, Is there, like, a search? Like... Yeah, I just put I just put like Third Strike, Street Fighter, and then this past week, like in the filters and Oh my Oh so, I see. Because these okay. are all things that happened just in the past week. Oh okay, okay. So it's not like yeah. it's not like all time. I so. liked um I liked number three. I really liked number three. Oh the the, the Hugo taunt? Yeah, I think he like baited that out. It you was, think so? Um, absolutely. <laughs> he set him up. I like that one. All right. So I, I will definitely check out uh, H Rose uh, Lagmaster Hugo, but uh, uh, by you know as a as a as a rule, I don't usually put lag stuff on pack it up unless it's like super egregious, you know, like rollbacks that are like that rollback action for like three seconds or like teleports or stuff like that. But you know, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at that. I, I I was hoping for like my own bloopers on here. That would have been good. Well, you know that would have been the best. Maybe if you uh, come back on the podcast next, next time, I'll, I'll show you some of my own bloopers. bloopers. Okay, awesome, awesome. So before we leave uh, the podcast, um, he um, obviously, you know, third strike. You know, we're not gonna continue playing this game forever, <laughs> right? I, I differ. I, I or maybe you. or maybe yeah. some of us are gonna stop playing, and so it's I don't always think so. you don't think so. So it's important that, you know, obviously new players start playing. So, um, like, what what advice? I mean, this is a question that I always ask my, my guests. But um, so what advice would you have for, for people who just, like, picked up the game? I mean, you know, just, like, what are some of the things that you really think that well, they I, should I, do in terms I think of... This game, yeah, I think this game is really tough. Like, it's definitely not a... Um... It's not a casual game. You mm -hmm. know, you can't just be like, oh, I woke up in the morning and I decided I want to be a Third Strike player. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. Like, it really takes a lot of effort, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you know, in my way of explaining things, I would say the game will reward you if you put the effort into it, mm -hmm. you know. And if you don't put the effort into it, the game will, the Third Strike gods will not bless you at Um but, you know, I disagree. Like, I feel like this game, for, for me, I see this, I, I see Third Strike like chess, mm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. I will hope to be playing this game when I'm 60, 70 years old mm -hmm. and a, a grandmaster of the character Ken. Mm -hmm. um, Kuroda will be a grandmaster of every, every character in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see myself as a grandmaster for the character Ken. I hope I can get that, you know, get to that level at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Third Strike is good because it, it really um, exercises the brain. I think, you know, as we grow up to be adults, you know, it's important to exercise, exercise our brain. And for me, this is my exercise of my brain is to come in and play Third Strike once a year. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I hope that, you know, we can continue this um, long run of, of one big event where everybody shows up every year. Or two, um, like you suggested. Or, maybe. Two, or two, if we can, you know, if, if, 
if things work out, you know, mm-hmm. if as as we get older, of course, we have more responsibility, whatever it is, hopefully it works out. But, you know, I think, you know, in order for it to work out, we need participation from from players like like you, AC Slayer. We expect you there next year. Yes, 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 definitely. All right. So before we get going, I just wanted to uh, just remind everyone that you've been watching um, the Mutant Experience. Um, but before we uh, before we get out of here, uh, I just wanted to remind everyone of some events that are coming up. Obviously, the big one, TFC, September 29th to October 2nd uh, or 1st. Um, Five Star will be there. The Japanese will be there. New York will be there. So definitely, uh, if you haven't made your plans to go, then you should definitely get on, get this on is, that. Um, I, I think this is a big battle this year, TFC. Yeah. This, is a, this is a really big battle this year. Yeah. I told my... Bra- oh, go ahead. Sorry. A lot of bragging rights this year. Yeah. Um, on Monday nights... Uh, Arcadium holds it down with his uh, ST stream uh, from his garage, so definitely uh, check that out. Um, every other Thursday, Lost Ark Video Games, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, they stream Arcade Third Strike uh, every other Thursday. Um, obviously, the Lost Ark crew is one of the more active scenes uh, in America. Shoutouts to the UK Third Strike players. Um, I think uh, you saw a graphic for Gutter Trash Volume 8, which is set to happen in November. Um, Let's go ahead and just recycle some of these uh, events uh, because I keep telling myself I'm going to change the time, but I never, I never do. Um, East Coast Throwdown. So uh, that's the event that's happening uh, this upcoming weekend. Um, for those of you who want to play Third Strike, the arcade room is 24 hours, and it's a $20 spectator fee. So um, if you want to, if you want to grind some Third Strike on the arcade, definitely consider going to ECT. Um, a, a tournament that was just announced actually recently, uh, Red Bull Battlegrounds. Actually, uh, Colin told me this, Yee. Um, in order to enter Third Strike, you have to enter SF5. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Gutter Trash, like I said, All Volume right. 8. Okay. That's happening the same weekend. Um, I'm sure a lot of the French players will be there as well. So, um, definitely, uh, check all those events out. Um, so once again, uh, Yee, thanks for, uh, coming on the show uh, i appreciate it uh good luck at tfc good luck to uh all the socal players um i know it's been a while since i moved out to new york but um obviously the socal players will always have a, a special place i guess the, so- in, the in socal that, players in that also always have more pressure yes in that in, in my black heart of mine there's always going to be a, <laughs> a soft spot for you third uh, socal players um yeah. so yeah good luck to uh good luck to you and the other socal players at uh tfc and um for those of you who are wondering who what's next week uh on the mutant experience we're gonna have um a very special guest a uh, british old school yun player rakurai uh he used to grind with a lot of the old school players uh including ryan hart um he's gonna be uh, on the stream uh next weekend uh yun specialist uh, from the uk and so um, I'm really looking forward to that podcast because uh, I'd like to learn more about, you know, different scenes and how they started playing this game. Uh, so once again, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Mutant Experience. Thanks, Yi, for, for, for coming on the show. Thank you um, for having me. Watch TFC and play Third Strike. It's a good game. I'll see you guys next week. All right.